Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. This is episode beta 81 for Friday, the 20th of May, 2016. This is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Kent, and I am not joined by Amos this week. This week, somebody else is filling in, and she, I think, is trying to stage a coup (laughs) and take over the podcast. Welcome to the show, Jackie Hearn. What's up, Jackie? Hey, hey, thanks uh, thanks so much for having me on. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd, as soon as you said I was going to attempt a coup, <laughs> uh, you know, I departed. I was like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not taking blame for this. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm really excited to do this. So th- thanks for having me on. Yeah, not a problem. Um, yeah, man, what a week. I am so glad. I, I know I say this all the time, but I am so glad that this week is over. It is Friday. It's time for Ritual Misery. I'm so glad. Oh, my gosh. How was your week, Jackie? Hopefully uh, better than mine. I, I don't know. It was, you know, um, I guess it wasn't the worst. <laughs> yeah. Could have been better, though. Anything, uh, anything crazy happen? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been um a couple of weeks ago. The last time I was on your show... The day of, okay, and I'll just keep doing this all day. This will be great. Um, the last time I was on your show, I um, I think I complained or said that uh, one of my teeth had cracked. Oh, and so right. I had to go to the dentist, and I'm still dealing with that. Um, I, you know, I got these, like, I don't know, they, they put, like, fake things in, and it's a pain in the ass. I can't eat anything properly. Mm. Um, so then I'm not sleeping well, and I hate After Effects, and I hate <laughs> Chrome, and that's all I have to say about that. Oh, God. Yeah, I can share the dislike for Chrome. I haven't used After Effects, but, yeah, Chrome can, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So, work. I am not the type of person that gets nervous about going to work. Are are you mm-hmm. are, are do you get nervous about work? Are you a nervous? Person? Um. Well, uh, I guess no. Um. But well, I, I'm a I'm a public speaker. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for the first year and a half, uh, I, I was miserable. I was terrified. Um. I my face would like uh get all splotchy and different patterns all over my face. Oh wow! Yeah, it's like a, and like then hives I, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was apparent, and then I d- I discovered on the internet it's a histamine level thing. So I would just take a Benadryl, and then that went away. Oh, and okay. then uh, then I my confidence picked up, and now I'm not not nervous at all. Oh, right on. Um, but yeah. So well, what's make it? What made you nervous at work? Well, see, it's weird because I I work on an air force base, mm, and mm-hmm. the um, I guess kind of the parent unit of us that's actually in a different state. Uh, they were. They were going to do a visit this week, and basically just just a few of the guys were going to come over, and I'd never met these guys, which kind of played into the the nervousness, I guess. Um, I'm I'm pretty new at this job. I've been doing it for about six, seven months now, and these guys between them probably have 30, 40 years experience uh, doing my job, mm. and that normally you know doesn't really bother me because I'm I'm the kind of person that. When I'm given a task, whether it's a you know like a my job or if it's just a you know hey go go learn how to do this real quick, I'm the kind of person that that gets into the books and reads and learns everything I can about it, and I want to do it to the best of my ability. So I'm usually really confident about my ability to do things. Well, these guys coming normally wouldn't be a problem, except everybody that I work with knows these guys and built them up to be these like I don't want to say bad people but you know these hard asses that you know they're they're going to tear your your stuff apart and and they're not going to like the way you do this and the way you do that and I was like oh my god I think they came on um was it Tuesday I think it was Tuesday so I got up for work Tuesday morning just dreading it I was like oh god Oh God! These, this is the day that those guys are coming. And, oh man, damn it! Uh, so I get to work, and I'm getting like nervous. And they didn't get there till about an hour after I had been at work. So I'm already on like I think I was getting ready to pour my third cup of coffee by this time. And I'm just like all jittery and like, oh no, this is gonna suck. This is awful. And then they get there, 
And they're actually really cool guys. And uh, oh. they quite a bit. So <laughs> it was all for nothing. <laughs> it was a bunch of build up for, for nothing. So that's something. Oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I guess I could, I could definitely understand that. Um, that's. Uh, yeah. No. You know. I guess I do. I do. I do get nervous, like with new clients, and uh, I, I feel like they don't understand what they're like hiring me for um right, right. and then i f- i just dread it and then you know usually get in there and it's it's okay after a while but so i can kind of relate to that yeah it was it was just a weird experience for me because i i love meeting new people and usually i'm kind of excited about the prospect of meeting new people and it was just kind of mm-hmm. i don't know it's just a weird i think it was all just the build-up of my coworkers. they they kind of i think they kind of misdirected me on that they ruined it for oh, you oh man yeah so did you yeah. do anything cool this week other than the, uh, uh, nothing, the, the no, nothing cool. Um, I, I tried to, like I said, I was trying to learn After Effects, and you know, I, I thought I was a genius because I, I thought I had figured it out like within an hour. Uh, but my, but uh, apparently, I need a lot more RAM, <laughs> and so it, it was really frustrating. And so I, I thought I was going to lose my mind. And so what I did was what I do to gain my sanity back, and that is to watch Breaking Bad again. Uh, so I'm watching Breaking Bad um, on another computer because I can't run it on the one I'm, you know, trying to work act- After Effects on. Mm. Uh, for the I think for the 11 millionth time. <laughs> so, oh, and it never man. gets old to me. So. Oh, it's such a great show. I've only watched it through, all the way once. Uh huh. But oh man, so good. I c- I can definitely see do that in the future. But yeah, did you, you did you watch it uh, as the show was airing, or did you binge no. and watch? Oh, I, I binged like just mm. last year. I watched it in 2015. So oh, I cool. was uh, like, really late to the game. Uh, but yeah, so good. But yeah, speaking of RAM, I I had to mess with RAM this week. My iMac is a late 2009 model, and it came with four gigabytes of RAM, and that's all that it's had up until just a couple of days ago. I upgraded, I maxed it out to 16 gigabytes of RAM now, hoping that that will fix some of my my OBS issues. And I think it's smoothed out some of them, but I think I'm having maybe some bandwidth issues at this point. I don't know. But as long as we don't go back to alpha and just stay in beta, <laughs> I, think I'll, I think I'll be good with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just stay in beta. For the, it's a nice, comfortable place. Uh, speaking of uh, the beta, um, I'm, I'm having a little audio issue. I, I didn't want to have to say it out loud, but, uh, you know, I'm hearing parts of what you're saying, but I picked it up enough to know <laughs> what's going on. Yeah, see, I, I wonder if that has to do with the stream or if that's maybe, um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on because I, I can hear you just fine. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so if I start talking about, like, um, uh, um Oreo cookies or something out of nowhere. It's because I have no idea what's going on. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. Oh, man. I don't know why I said Oreo cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that you were watching Breaking Bad this week. I, uh-huh. my, what, what I got into this last week, actually, I guess it was a, a, about a week and a half ago. I, I was just kind of looking on Netflix and trying to find something to watch. And I noticed a documentary about the 60s that was put oh. out by CNN. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, this is interesting. Let me, let me throw an episode on. And it was so good. It was, the first episode was about the assassination of JFK. Cool. And it was so good. It, it had so much footage of like press coverage and, and stuff that I had never seen before. I thought I'd seen like all the JFK footage that was ever put out there no like they really dug deep and found some stuff that i'd never seen before and so i decided okay you know what i'm gonna watch this whole series i think it was like 10 episodes 10 or 12 episodes and so i kind of binge watched it this week and oh my god every single episode of it is so so good excellent and the, they have the 70s out as well and i, I watched yes. the first episode of that Actually, I watched the first two episodes of that, and I'm, I'm probably going to binge watch the rest of that this coming week. And right now, they're producing the 80s, and I yes. absolutely cannot wait for that. I, I, I have caught, because um, I'm supposed to be a cord c- killer, 
but I'm at the moment I'm not. Um, I, I gotta go back and forth. Uh, so I I have been watching, but I don't watch you know on a cable with a cable box on a TV. I watch you know via the you know um, like the Comcast login for oh, okay. the website, mm-hmm. and I watch you know everything like recorded. Um, but uh, yeah, I caught that. I did caught. I did catch at least one episode of the eighties. Oh. And mm-hmm. it was really good. It was really good. I, I couldn't like pull myself away. Yeah. Um, and then I saw this. I saw that you'd watch the 60s, but I didn't see it on the CNN site. But I realize now it is on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. And I, I didn't really put two and two together that that's what's in Netflix. It, it's just the CNN show. Yeah. 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 So good. I'm yeah. Pretty- so I would like to see that. And so the, isn't it just like there's one on, you know, I don't know, television, one on, like you said, JFK, maybe another one on um, civil rights. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. The civil rights okay. one was one of my favorite ones. It was. Oh, good. Oh, it was so, so, so good. And most of the episodes are like 42 minutes long. The civil rights one was like an hour and a half. So it was oh, you wow. get basically a double episode on just the civil rights. And well, it is so thorough in the coverage of it. It was, it was absolutely amazing. They had ones about uh, the space race, uh, the Vietnam War. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, like music, like the uh, like they had mm-hmm. a whole thing about mm-hmm. the hippies and Woodstock <laughs> and that whole like social movement. Uh, basically, the uh, the youth of America being disgruntled with the government and uh, kind of the status so quo beginnings of the anti-war movement. Yeah. No, yeah. That whole thing. And, uh, I, I don't know. They, they covered everything. Cool. The sixties the, the was such a tumultuous decade yes. and they did a really good job. Just kind of just really putting that, putting it all right out there for the audience. It was, yeah, I, I cannot recommend it enough. It's so good. It'd be cool to kind of co- compare that with the with the eighties, you know, because they were so different. Yeah, and um, I, you know, I am so looking forward to the eighties because yeah. I lived it. I was a mm-hmm. kid in the eighties, and I remember, I remember it so vividly, or at least I think I do. Maybe I'm, maybe my brain has overwritten it with, you know, fake memories or whatever. But, but I have a very clear picture in in my head of of key events from the eighties, and I. I can't wait to see the documentary perspective of my childhood, mm. basically. Well, I wish I could say the same, but I was born in like 1999. Oh, I'm right, kidding. right. Of course, kidding. of course. I forgot about. That. Um, I yeah, forgot how young right. you are. <laughs> so, of course, I don't remember the 80s. No, no, I don't remember the 80s. Um, <laughs> you're you're no. young enough to be my daughter. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Um, amazing. But and speaking of the, the, the CNN uh, documentaries, uh, I absolutely love them, too. And um, I've been watching, there's a new series out um, by a comedian, um, Camus Bell. Oh, okay. uh, I wasn't really familiar with him before the show. But uh, he he goes and he, he, he meets people that he wouldn't normally meet and tries to uh, get to know them and... and, and uh, and anyways, the, I think his first episode was on the KKK. Oh, yes. I that, did hear about that one. Okay, yeah. It was really crazy. And uh, there was a good one on, on prisons. Um, uh, like, I think he went to um, San Quentin uh, in California and um, got to know the prisoners there. That was really, really good. Hmm. And then I also love Anthony Bourdain. Um, I think he's a cool dude. Uh, anybody who kind of lives a life like he has and, you know, just can go around and travel and eat. And get paid for it. I gotta, yeah. gotta you know, give him a some you know, cred. I, I've got, I've got mixed <laughs> feelings about Anthony Bourdain. Okay, everyone does. I was oh, going to ask you. Man. Yeah, would, this, yeah, sure. I'm not offended, but I think you, no. I think part of the reason that I, I'm mixed on him, I, I'm, I think I'm jealous of him. Yeah. Like I would love his life. I, I love I traveling and seeing new places, eating new food, mingling with the locals. It's great. But I think the part that I don't like is that he. I don't know. I I think he's kind of magoo. I uh, <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't fit in with these places that he goes at all. He is the sore thumb <laughs> wherever he. He's goes. gotten better. He's gotten better because I've watched some of his early like no reservations, and he yeah. definitely seems like a cocky like <laughs> asshole. Yeah. And uh, I but I I do see him like in places now with with you know sort of very obscure cultures that. Mm. 
and 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 I, I think he's I think he's getting a little bit better in his older age with uh, you know being a little more um, uh, understanding or uh, I don't know what, what word I'm looking for right um, yeah. compassionate or Compa- something yeah maybe yeah a little more respectful of the uh, local yeah customs right. and things yeah yeah and you know, oh go ahead I was just gonna say yeah I I haven't seen any of his later you know more um, current work so yeah maybe my opinion will swing to the, more to the positive on him yeah oh you know and i like my one of my loves of my life is, uh is to travel and so if i if there are places i can't go you know it's really sad when a show like that attempts to fill the void for you and yeah. and then you just feel bad about yourself oh actually <laughs> It really pissed me off. I think that the season finale, the series finale of his No Reservation show, he said, um, you know, you've, you, you know, thanks to your, to this audience for watching. Um, and uh, uh, basically, um, you know, it, 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 well, he closed with saying, basically, so why don't you get off your butt and go see the world? Hmm. You know, get off the couch, you know, yeah. put the potato chips down and go see the world. And I'm like, oh, okay, Anthony Bourdain, I will go see the world because I am a lazy bum sitting on my couch <laughs> watching you. Ask. So I right. totally get not liking him. <laughs> yep, yep. I the, the parts of the world that I've seen were at the expense of the Air Force. And oh, that, yeah, you've probably traveled a lot more than I have, I'm sure. Yeah, pro- I mean, especially in Europe. I. I was in Asia, but I, I've only been to a couple places, sadly, in Europe. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, in Asia. But mm. in Europe, I saw quite a bit of Europe. And that's just because going to another country in Europe is like going to another state. Mm. If, it's, if it's that. Because the countries are so small and everything just so close together that uh, I, I saw quite a few countries uh, when I was living over there. And, but, yeah, since I've gotten out of the Air Force, though, I haven't been anywhere. I, I flew to California once. <laughs> that's, that's about the extent. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's something. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we were talking a little bit about civil rights, and there's something I'm really excited about. I thought you might be, too, if you're a history buff, mm-hmm. but there's um, HBO uh, Tomorrow. Um, there's a Brian, a Brian Cranston is starring in a LBJ uh, yes. film, about, yes. and it's focusing on the Civil Rights um, Act. Um, so, uh, anyway, it looks interesting. Yep. I forgot all about that. I can't, I can't wait to see that because I love Brian Cranston. We were talking about Breaking Bad earlier. Yeah. I love it all him. comes around. Yep. All I, come from with me. It always comes back to Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Somehow. loved him. I loved him on Malcolm in the Middle. That's where I really <laughs> became a fan of Brian Cranston. Never saw that. Never oh, saw that. oh, Jackie, Jackie. Really? Do yourself a favor. That is one of the greatest sitcoms of all time. All right. All right, and all right. especially you, you being a Brian Cranston fan, yeah, this will give you a completely different perspective on on Brian Cranston. I I I I, I imagine I imagine <laughs> I, I do so like cool. him as a person too. He's really funny. Yeah, um, yeah. I've I've heard a lot of interviews of him, and he's he's a he's he's a funny dude. He's he's pretty awesome. Yeah, he's great. You need to watch that. I think it's is it still on Netflix? I think it might be on Netflix. Oh, okay, I'll check that out. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, it's either Netflix or or Hulu. It's it's definitely, it's it's definitely out there on the streaming. Um, but yeah, uh, oh yeah, we hear my cat. Yeah, I hear him. <laughs> Sorry, I told you. <laughs> no, that's I was awesome. telling. Can I can I tell the audience the issue with the cat? Oh, absolutely. Okay, because and because we were thinking it would actually make for a good podcast if this happened. <laughs> yeah. But he's a he's an old cat, very old, um, and he's kind of like losing control of things. And uh, 20 minutes before we got on our call, he squatted, he stood up, I had a laptop on a table, he stood up over it and like hunched up, and you know, I was like, you know, anyways, he, was, he almost took a, a number two on my laptop. So, um, yeah, he wants to get in here and get right in front of the camera and take a dump. <laughs> <laughs> that would make for good TV. <laughs> yes, it would. It wouldn't be good for me, but... Right. <laughs> And then we could all just sit here and watch you freak out and yeah. clean up the mess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why not? I'll do anything for comedy. Oh, man. That's awesome. All right. So, so let's move on to this. Uh, 
It is time for TED Talks. Did you watch a TED Talk, Jackie? Yes, I did. What did you watch? I, well, I watch them regularly. Um, uh, my only problem with them is because they're so short. Like, by the time, I want, I want to put something on and let it go and then get involved in something. And then before you know it, it's done. You got to go to another one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but uh, I found uh, there was one on um, on filter bu- bu- bubbles. Um, how uh, I, I, the guy's name is um, Eli Parsner, I think is I don't know how to pronounce his name. Anyways, he he talked about how you know um, social media uh, is starting to really filter out things that don't relate to you specifically. And I think he started off with a quote by um, Zuckerberg that people are some people care more about a dead squirrel. Uh, outside of their house than images of that than than hearing about people dying in Africa right. and um, and it, and it was really effective because he showed how you know his friends on Facebook um, you know he's got liberal friends and conservative friends and he's more liberal so he's starting they're starting to weed out the comments of his conservative friends mm-hmm. on his feed because he doesn't click on their links and that scares the shit out of me yep, um yep. Because while I don't want to hear people going on, like I don't know, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear any political arguing in social media at all. Um, it, it it really drives me nuts. Uh, but again, it scares me that one guy can look up Egypt and um, only hear about travel, while another but person will hear about you know um, a political crisis there. Mm-hmm. Um, it just depends on what you're searching and 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 what it feeds out to you. So, anyways, I you know it was it was a great explanation of it, and um, it, it's it's very scary because you know. And he talked about the the um, the media, uh, the press. The press used to, you know, they're 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 well not used. Well, I don't know. Yeah, used to press. The press isn't that great these days, but. They have a, co- a code, um, an eth- a code of ethics for, for journalists and, and editors, and they try to uh, report things and, and provide information to people to let them be more informed voters. Mm-hmm. And they did this pretty well, but now print media is dead. Um, and what, people are going to social media for their news, so it's, um, yep. you only it's, see it's depressing. What, yeah, you only see what, you're, what you've liked or what your friends like or or whatever yeah absolutely and this it it was interesting to me because this talk was from 2011 so it's it's a five-year-old talk almost and the the same thing like we i don't know if we fixed this Uh, we might have improved some of the algorithms in that time but the problem Mm -hmm. is still here it's still very a very relevant topic because everything now, like we were talking about Netflix earlier, even Netflix shows you what it thinks that you want to see. Yeah. E- everything that we do online is tailored specifically to us. Uh, you, you know, your ads are targeted, everything, absolutely everything. And that sounds fantastic. Like, oh, it's my own personal internet. But exactly like you said, it's not showing you the things that you quote don't want to see right which is not really a good thing you right. should be exposed to differing opinions which is the the beauty of the internet you get to see everything but if if the algorithm filters that from us what are we doing we're just feeding our own arguments and feeding our own interest and we don't get to see the opposing side so we never have our eyes open to different ideas yeah um, yeah yep, so, it's um so yeah, I, th- I yeah, think that troubling. is a challenge. That is a challenge for uh, programmers of all types, uh, especially. I mean, especially uh, web developers, people like that. Yes, the people that are that are making these algorithms. Like you need to. Yeah, keep the this evil in mind. algorithm. Yeah. yeah, it's not even. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, it's just the way it works. That's. Uh, yeah, they yeah. need to build in some some sort of uh, uh, like a balancing mechanism, or or as the the speaker said. Give us some control over yeah, what we're definitely, seeing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so, um, yeah, great talk. I, I, You recommend it? Oh, I'm sorry? I, I said I thought it was a great talk. Do you recommend it? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I I, I think I just saw um, someone uh, mentioning it, um, maybe on Twitter or something, and uh, yeah, I checked it out, and I was, yeah, I thought it was great. So yep. I needed one for the show. So <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I I watched a bunch of them this week as well, and I couldn't. It, it took me a long time to decide on on which one on I was going to use. Yeah, um, I was watching things that that were very visual that I would mm-hmm. not be able to do it justice by talking about it. Oh, I see. So, yeah, yeah. I, I settled on one um, by Alexis Ohanian. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, everybody's names are. Yeah, that's the, that is the problem. You got to have a fucked up name to be a Ted speaker. Yes, I right, swear exactly. to God. Because that, that's comedy in itself. Every week, me and Amos <laughs> trying to pronounce the names of these speakers. Like McBoat Face. Yeah. But, but no, I'm going to let you get to that. <laughs> but yeah, so this guy, he's actually he's one of the founders of Reddit. Uh, him and two of, two of his buddies, I think, founded Reddit. Well, anyway, the, the name of his talk was How to Make a Splash in Social Media. And basically what he was talking about was this movement that people... It was basically a Save the Whales movement, and people wanted to put uh, tracking devices on these whales so that they could track them and uh, protest governments that are hunting the whales... And part of the campaign was this one particular whale. They wanted to name it. So mm-hmm. this becomes more personal and whatnot. So in true internet fashion, they put out a poll. What should we name this, this whale? And the name, the name that, they, that the internet overwhelmingly chose for it was Mr. What was it? Mr. Splashy Pants. Yeah, Splashy Pants. Of course. Mr. Splashy Pants. And the organization that was running this, and I completely forget what the organization was. Uh, oh, Greenpeace, Greenpeace, I think. Greenpeace, that's what it was. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. you're right. So Greenpeace was like, no, no, there were way better suggestions. You know, people were submitting these, like, really intellectual names, like ancient languages, the, the word for, you know, some you know, inspiring message type names or whatever and they were like yeah we're not get, we're not gonna name it mr splashy pants we're gonna choose one of these other, other names and the internet of course rose up and just protested and said no 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 no, no. let's 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 vote again and the vote margin just got even wider and wider so they ended up actually naming the whale <laughs> mr splashy pants and they capitalized on it they, they made merchandise people were really interested in following mr splashy pants so the, the campaign was a huge success. And what that made me think of was just a couple of months ago, the the exploration, the scientific exploration vessel. Yeah. From, uh, was it England, I think? Yes. Yeah, the, they did a similar thing. They put a poll out there, what should we name this boat? And overwhelmingly, the internet chose... Uh, Bodie McBoat, Bodie McBoatface. Yep. And they were just like, nope, 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 we're not doing it. And I think they really missed an opportunity. They definitely missed the lesson learned from Mr. Splashy Pants. Yeah. And yeah, that's funny. I uh, When I saw you put that in the notes, I was, uh, first I saw the article or, or the, the TED Talk, so I watched that and... When I heard Mr. Splashy Pants, that mm-hmm. rung a bell, and I was like, wait, how did I not know? Or maybe I did know about this, and I was trying to put two and two together. And then and then you put in, Mc, reminds me of Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> and I was like, well, no, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. And then I had to go look up Bodie McBoatface because I was like, wait a minute, I have no clue what this is about. I know I've heard about it. And the reason I've heard about it was, um, I think it was an episode of uh, DTNS, uh, with um, Veronica was on, and Veronica was going on and on about how she loves the name Bodie McBoatface, and, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know. And so I was like, "Well, how do I not even know what this is about?" So um, I had to look it up. But yeah, yeah, I, I thought that was great, and I I was laughing out loud completely <laughs> when I saw that you put that in the doc. So yeah, because yeah, yeah. Th- this was a it was a pretty neat talk, and it's a it's a fairly short one too. So yeah, everybody yeah. go check those out. Yeah, that was good. It was like four minutes. It was like, good. You get in, you get out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, 
Are you into movies, Jackie? You like you like going to the movie theater oh, yeah. to see movies? Do you do you, do you typically go to the theater and see new movies coming out? Uh, yeah, I usually go to the theater, um, but I often see movies when they come out. Yeah, well, even what, if what, it's not at the theater. <laughs> what's, what's the last movie you saw in the theater, though? Um, gosh, <laughs> uh, it. Might have been, uh, I think it was Batman versus Superman. Okay, so that that was fairly recent. Yeah, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah, so I mean, for me, but w- yeah. one of the movies coming out this summer that's uh, set up to be a big blockbuster is the new Ghostbusters movie. Do you think you might go see that one? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll see it when it comes out. I don't know that <laughs> yeah. I'll go to the theater. No, yeah. I'm kidding. Um, I haven't decided. I haven't uh, decided. I, okay, so, I, you know, I, I saw that we were going to start talking about it, and I realized I had not even seen the trailer for it yet. Mm. So I, I watched the trailer. I wasn't excited about it. I was not excited about it. Mm. I watched the trailer, and I found myself smiling through the whole thing. Mm. And, you know, everybody is hating on this movie, and um, I don't think that they needed to remake Ghostbusters, but... I did like some of the um, sort of subtle things about women in it, such as there's a scene where they, they're, they're all lined up, ready to go into a building to eradicate, and um, one of them says, okay, let's go, and the other one started to say that at the same time. Yeah. And so these two women were like, oh, no, I'm sorry, next time I'll let you say it. Oh, no, that's <laughs> fine. You can say what, you know, and that's exactly how women are. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they nobody, none of them, you know, they all many of them may be leaders, but they they they're they're very often kind of reserved at being leaders. And so, anyways, it was it was things like that that I thought was kind of cute. And um, yeah, I'm go- I'm gonna see it. Just yeah. I think because people hate on it so much, I'll probably want to see it more. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you know, and it kills me. Nobody has seen this movie yet. No, but half of the internet as, is just raging about the shitty new Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. And how bad it's going to be, and this is the worst thing that could have happened, and you know. So let me back up before before the trailer was even released. I was pretty excited about this. I, yeah, it, it didn't need to be remade, but I loved the original Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Big fan, and if it's done well, I'm a fan of remakes as well. Because I, I I get that little nostalgia bump, as well as you know getting to see current actors in a modern setting tell the same story, and it's just kind of a, a neat thing if it's done well. So, yeah. So I was pretty yeah. excited when I heard that they were going to do this, and then they came out with the announcement that it's going to be an all female cast, mm-hmm. and then I was like, That's right. It came out later wow. that those yeah. be women. Yeah, and I was like, "Wow, okay, this is like a, a different take." Like, basically, I thought they were going to tell the same story, but with a female cast. And I was like, "This will be interesting." Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still in. Well, then they come out with the trailer. Probably, oh, it's been a while now, two, three months, I think, since the first trailer came out. And, ugh, like it, it didn't sit well with me like the scene that you pointed out where the the women were interacting Mm -hmm. i thought was was great i thought it was funny but the majority of the trailer just felt forced i think yes yeah 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 no i get it i get it and i think that's a lot of the why the internet is is hating on it or at least a a good portion of the people are hating on it because of the the trailer I don't think was edited together very well uh, because <laughs> immediately after the trailer came out and everybody started shitting on the trailer, a fan or a, you know, someone that had seen it recut the footage into a different trailer, same footage, oh. but a different cut. Interesting. And it's like a million times better. Mm. It's way better. And then, so just this week they released trailer number two. And it was a marked improvement over the first trailer. However, still seeming a little bit forced. And then they also released the international trailer, which I think 
out of all the trailers, all the footage that we've seen so far, I think the international trailer captures more of what I want to see in this movie than than the other ones had. Mm-hmm. And so I'm I'm hopeful. I think just the whoever is putting together the trailers is not necessarily the best person to be doing it because yeah. I don't think they're capturing what. Because what what you pointed out was the women interacting with each other is what mm-hmm. is compelling and um, a source of comedy, and I absolutely agree. We see very little of that in these trailers. Mm, yep. And oh yeah, yeah. I barely picked up on that one little thing. Um, uh, not that not that even that that scene was that funny, but to me, I was like, okay, well, maybe there's going to be a lot of that. Like, right. Yes. Um, the fact that um, you know uh, these women are or well, one of them is the um, uh, or, or, I don't know. They're they're brilliant scientists. They're the best in their field, and yet you know they're women. So I guess there's that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I I I don't know. I mean, I I don't I I, I don't know. I just think that if it is anything like the original um, Ghostbusters, it would be a fun ride. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be a fun, a joy, uh, even for kids particularly. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's going to be good. I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I, yeah, I try not to. I try not to get think too much into trailers, mm-hmm. um, uh, and, and make that, you know decide for me whether or not I'm going to see any see something or not but um yeah no I mean I don't know we'll, we'll give it a shot and see um yeah like I, I a, use I use trailers ahead. as kind of like a hype machine like there's there's people like Jeff Kanata that avoids oh, trailers right. mm-hmm. like the plague mm-hmm. I like the hype that that it gives me mm-hmm. uh, so if it's a movie that that I know I'm going to see or it's a subject matter that I know I'm going to like I will definitely watch the trailer and it, it helps me get hyped up and like, just like, yeah, yeah, I can't wait for this movie. Um, so I don't know, but you know, that's just me, but I, I'm really concerned about the internet coming out in mass and shitting on this movie that hasn't even come out yet. And what really concerns me about it is there seems to be this trend of, uh, misogyny. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, a few weeks ago, uh, probably actually probably about a month or month and a half, two months ago, um, we had Chris Ronan and Snowshoe on the show. Yeah. And we talked about GamerGate. And oh yeah. Some of the, some of the issues with that, and a, a lot of the uh, controversial stuff that goes with with GamerGate, um, at its core, is misogynistic. Mm-hmm. And that just saddened me. This is 2016. <laughs> like, what the hell? We were just talking about the documentaries on the 60s and the 70s. And women marched and got, uh, you know, equal rights and made strides toward equal pay for equal work and all of this stuff, all of this work and progress that we made as a culture, as a people. Mm-hmm. And here we are, like, 30, 40, 50 years later. And they're still getting paid 79 cents for every dollar a man makes. So, right. you know. Right. Yes. That. <laughs> and, and I, I just, I, I, I don't get it. I, I, I don't know. Jackie, help me out. Help me understand. No, I, no, no I, I, you agree. I agree. I, I think, I think it's, I think it's really always going to be a hard battle uh, to, for equality. Um, in any situation, yeah. Sadly, I because I'm I guess I'm very pessimistic, but but I I definitely see that f- with men and women. For I I don't know. I mean, it's just it's it's always been part of most cultures, right? It, well, we're you on know the, I don't we're on see the it going precipice. away. We're on the precipice right now of this country's first f- female president. True. Um. Now, whether that comes to pass, I, I don't know. But if I was a betting man, I would say that this year we are going to elect our first woman president. She's got a good chance, yeah. Yeah. Um, Siri keeps going off. I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm definitely not saying Siri. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, 
I just, I, I don't. Oh, Siri's a female voice, right? So she yeah. wants to jump oh, in. Oh, that's what it is. She has, <laughs> she has comments. <laughs> she wants to correct you on something. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I just, I, I think our country is ready for a woman president as much as some people don't think so or, or would mm-hmm. disparage the thought of it. Um, but I just, I, I don't know. I just, I don't get the persistence of not just misogyny, but, but racism and homophobia and mm. discrimination of basically anything. I mean, there's a difference between discriminating taste, like, you know, I don't like vegetables. I would prefer fruits. You know, that's mm-hmm. discriminating taste. But when you say that, you know what? Vegetables are the devil and we should ban vegetables or we should make vegetables cost way more than fruits because they're terrible and only terrible people eat them, you know, or whatever. Well, you know, there's, also there's a, a big part of it, the thing that bothers me uh, a lot is this is a big problem in comedy. Um, women aren't funny and we all know it. Uh, oh. that, that's a common thing you that's hear. That's bullshit. Um, so I think, I think that that, that is, plays the biggest level in this, in this backlash to this movie is that how would you go, why would you go and take a movie that had Bill Murray and, uh, God, I can't, I can't even think of all their names at the moment and then go and turn it into, you know, put, put these women on because I mean, I love Kristen Wiig, so I'm going to see the movie. I don't know if I'll see it in the theater or I'll see it later, but I love Kristen Wiig and I love her movies. Yeah. Um, I think she's a great comedian, uh, a great comedy writer in particular. And I, I admire comedy writers more than actual showmen. Um, but, uh, I, but I think, I think that is the big part of this, um, the backlash on this movie is that it's, Yo, you're going to take this and turn it into, you know, if, if it had been originally a, mo- a woman, a, a movie, like, you know, they could take, you know, I don't know if you remember the movie. It was a movie called Nine to Five with Dolly Parton. Oh, and, yes, um, absolutely. That's, yes, that was early 80s. I remember that. Yeah, they, would, they wouldn't take that and turn that into a man's movie today. Like, it wouldn't even really be funny. Right, right. But, no, um, you know, it's, I, I think that's what it comes down to. It's just that they're taking this movie that's already great, already a great classic comedy, and, uh, you know, getting some funny women in it, but uh, not everybody likes those comedians. And yeah. um, I think it's because people in general, female comedians have it a lot harder. Right. You know, I don't know. I, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if the movie's going to be good or not, but I am hopeful. I'm a fan of the concept because, like I said, mm-hmm. I, I, I liked the original Ghostbusters. And I have no problem with it being a, a an all-woman cast or a remake of the original. Um, I don't know. I'm despite the horrible trailers that have been released i'm i'm looking forward to it i i think it's going to be good yeah. um another thing that bothers me is that people that that don't like remakes or a reimagining or or what have you yeah they will say the phrase this <laughs> has ruined my childhood or something to that effect yes how the fuck did that ruin your childhood? Your, no, your childhood memories your childhood are, are Nolan is Boyle. fine. Yeah, like I don't. I hate that <laughs> phrase. Like it's so stupid. It, is a, it doesn't even. It's a ridiculous sense. phrase. Yeah. <laughs> like I could hate this movie, and I will still have fond memories of watching <laughs> Ghostbusters as a kid. I I don't know what yeah. these people's problem is. That the the new one's going to overwrite your memories of the original. I I, I just I I don't know. There's something about that phrase that just kills me. It bothers the hell out of me. I don't know. I, yeah, you know, I try to admit at least one terribly embarrassing thing about myself in every podcast I do. <laughs> yes. And, uh, well, I guess the cat pooping on my desk is one. <laughs> uh, but the, the second one would be that in college, I think when I was like 21, mm. I said to... Oh, I'm sorry. That was uh, that was last year, by the way. Oh, right, um, uh, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, I said to my professor... I can't believe I said this. I said, music ruined my life. And he just kind of like put down what he had in his hands. And he said, he said, that is, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard a human being say. How you're, you're how old and music ruined your life. And I don't even know why I said it. I think I was talking about like being in love with somebody who was in a band and they like hurt me 
and the music just made me sad. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, but um, <laughs> anyways, that was the dumbest thing. And so I've never said anything like that again. And so to hear someone saying that something has ruined their childhood, that is just, I mean, <laughs> hey, you could have had a horrible life, a horrible childhood. You know, you could have been um, tr- mistreated, or, you know, or treated badly by your parents or somebody. And then, yeah, that could have ruined your childhood. But uh, <laughs> remaking yes. Ghostbusters 30 years later, eh, no. <laughs> yeah, that does not rank up there with... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, man. So, some people just must live pathetic lives. I don't know. <laughs> oh, geez. So, Jackie, you and I are podcasters. Oh, yeah. We are... I guess I am now. Yeah. <laughs> we are podcasters on DiamondClub.tv. Yeah. But we are not the like reason that diamond club tv exists we have a we have an a team a pro level version of what we do i guess we've got we've got superstars like brian brushwood justin robert young tom Merritt, um people like that doing amazing shows night at night attack of course being oh yeah yeah real shows the the flagship i would say of (laughs) diamond club yeah tv uh, but there is a there is an, a litany of d- the just these, let's call them indie shows or or B shows, I guess. Of you know, like there's the Ritual Misery podcast. Uh, there's there's all of these these great shows that stream on on Diamond Club TV. Yeah. Well, Amos and I would like to start a group. I don't want to call it a support group, uh, but like a mutually. <laughs> I mean, we can yeah. we can all sit no, no, in a no, circle. No, 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 because because I kind of need it. Like I, th- yeah. I think this is like the third or fourth podcast I've done this week, or in the yeah. last two days, or the last thirty six I mean, hours. We could all get together and, and sit in a I, circle. I, I could use some. I, I could use a support group right now. <laughs> Look, I, I, I could also use a bottle of rum. My name is Kent, and I am a <laughs> podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, but we're oh. but we're we're putting together this thing. It's it we're right now we're tentatively calling it the Diamond Club B Team Podcasting Group, and mm-hmm. we're gonna have we're gonna put together a Slack channel. It's basically gonna be a place where all of us uh, so called B Team podcasters on Diamond Club TV can kind of get together and share ideas. I love um, it. Talk about different ideas for guests, bits, yep. um, recording techniques, audio yes. equipment. Help all of these, with yeah, all lessons of these learned, things. right? Absolutely, exactly. all of these things. And if you are a streamer, especially on Diamond TV, if you want to be a part of this, you can email us podcast at ritualmisery.com. And especially if you put DCBT in the subject line, then we're going to go ahead and put you in the Slack channel. And then we're, we're trying to build this little, this little um, mutually beneficial community out of it so um real real interested to see where that goes i'm looking forward to everyone's input with that uh jack speaking of of all of these podcasts and things tell us tell us where people can find you what 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 are these shows that you do oh sure um oh and you know and by the way to talk to talk about that that the the b team um i, I really like that because lately i've been connecting with um more and more people in Diamond Club who say to me, hey, I want to start a podcast. Mm-hmm. Do you can, you know, I'll go get a mic. Can you want to start? And, and I, I've been, I, 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 can, I can never say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, so I've been, I've been finding myself taking on more and more things. And, um, and, and uh, but that's fine. I'm having fun. As long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. Exactly. And uh, I, I, you can't take it too seriously. You just got to get in there. You got to do it for the fun of it. And if you enjoy it, do it. If you think, oh, nobody wants to watch what I have to say or do, uh, screw them. Like d- nobody, nobody's going to be watching anyways. Just don't, <laughs> don't ever think of a podcast as something that people. When you start getting too consumed with with uh, your ratings or or this or that, I mean, you should. I think you should. I think you should definitely make goals. As mm-hmm. you guys are very successful in doing that. Uh, by the way, I, I have we're, a lot to learn, lessons to learn from we're, you. We're successful but, in, make, in in presenting goals, not necessarily achieving them. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think that's very important. But but I mean, but you can't get too wrapped up in it and, and right. feel. Because I, I kind of felt that way from time to time. Um, you know, particularly, you know, there's one podcast I have called Lawyer Up. It just means so much to me. <laughs> you know, 
know, uh, it's so important. And so when I, when I, I, I've heard nobody in Diamond Club, of course, but you know, I've heard some uh, people with other podcasts that are on the same topic, kind of put us down. I'm, um, I'm kind of like, oh, man, there's room for everybody, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, anyways, so I like that. I like that. I like that your idea. I think that's a great idea because. It, there's so many like lessons learned by you know like troubleshooting you know, OBS or or yes. um, your audio or or how to get up on iTunes um, all of that stuff like I th- I, th- I think that that's excellent I, I I can't wait for you guys to get that rolling but yeah so I already mentioned one I, I started another one today <laughs> uh, on Black Mirror and I'm not as threatened by that because uh, Black Mirror is such a short show yes there's what, <laughs> so we're only seven episodes go. right now right yeah yeah, yeah. six six and then the and then the, and the 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 last one uh Which is white christmas a, yeah basically a it's basically a movie yeah it's a like a double episode yeah my favorite one personally um but so so we'll be done in seven weeks and then we wait until next year when the new uh episodes come out um but uh, that but but honestly if i i'm sorry i'm talking too much as I normally do, but I if if anybody wants to really see stuff that I'm really excited about, please follow me on YouTube. I'm uh, YouTube slash user slash Jackie Hearn or just Jackie Hearn. Subscribe to my channel because I have been doing a lot of puppet stuff, and I'm very excited about it. And I'm kind of banking these videos, and I'm going to do it. I, I might even turn it into a podcast itself nice. of a weekly. Uh, thing of videos so please follow me on youtube um and that that that's all i had to say sorry so <laughs> zip it, zip it. Does, <laughs> i'm sorry you probably couldn't see me but i zipped my mouth oh no that's great yeah definitely follow jackie in all of her places she is a very entertaining person i love following her everywhere oh no I'm, I'm a knucklehead <laughs> that's okay yeah the, the best place to follow me if you're interested in things that I'm doing, uh, go to Twitter, at RM underscore Del Noche. That's the best place to find me. If you're uh, interested in beer like I am, you can go to ratebeer.com and look up username Del Noche. I've been trying to rate a lot more lately, uh, the last few weeks, than I have been over the last couple of months. Um, you can follow the show on Twitter, at Ritual Misery. You can submit ideas on our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. Please, somebody, somebody, if you're listening, just go to ritualmisery.reddit.com and put anything in there. It's been like three months since anyone oh, put something there. So I forgot just, that you guys had one. I would have done that. I'd have been talking away. Yeah, like I'm, heck yeah. So instead of talking over talking in a podcast, I could just go there. <laughs> I'll just go pollute the Reddit. <laughs> That's right. No, that would be great. Any anything in there, we will definitely consider as a as a topic on our show. And typically, what happens is we get midway through the week, Wednesday, Thursday, and we're still like, "Oh crap, what are we going to talk about on tomorrow's show?" So yeah. if something's in the Reddit, there's a really good chance that we're going to talk about it because this this show is kind of a no holds barred, presented as as a a geeky show. Which we yeah. are because we're geeks, but we'll we'll sit here and talk about just about any topic. Go through our archives, and you will see. Uh, we, yeah, there's no topic <laughs> that's really off limits. So yeah, if you, if you guys could contribute to that, that'd be awesome. And what what was the, the Reddit again? Ritualmisery.reddit.com. Great, excellent. Yeah, I'm on my way. Yep. You can also email us podcast at ritualmisery.com. If you want to hear your voice on our show and you haven't been a guest yet, you should call us. You can call us and leave us a voicemail. It's 567-69-TRMPC or 567-698-7672. Of course, you can find all of these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback on our website, ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thanks for listening. For Jackie, for me, and for you, this is your Ritual Misery Podcast. Bye! Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs)